What's up, everyone? Brent Bot is back <laughs> in the house. Week 10, we got our rankings here. But first things first, Dustin, talk about what you're going to do when you're going to gamble a little bit. Get on to mybookie.ag. Thank you for sponsoring this video. Most trusted sports book on the web. And they have a mobile friendly site. So it's easy to get on there on your phone, place your bets, get on all that stuff. Like we said, you, like we've been saying, use promo code SMACK. Get a, a sign up bonus for signing up. Click on the link in the description. Check out mybookie.ag. All right, let's get into those quarterbacks, and I'm going to talk about Jared Goff. Wow, has this guy really come along since a demismal, a demismal, a demismal? That's a, a good word. Whatever. A very bad rookie year. <laughs> Last two games alone, I'm going to talk a lot about last two games in this video. Last two games, 546 yards and six touchdowns. The young man is playing Houston this week. I expect another solid game out of him. That'll teach you for trying to use a big word. Abysmal. I, I, it was abysmal is what I was looking for. <laughs> I'm going to talk about number nine, Josh McCown. Number, number nine? nine? That's Brent ridiculous. Pop does not approve. <laughs> He's on the road against Tampa Bay, but Tampa Bay has been awful against the pass. And at this point, the Jets offense is clicking. They're looking good. McCown's looking good. He does not look like he's almost 40 years old out there. Ran into the end zone last week. Got a nice rushing touchdown. We think McCown is a low-end QB1 this week with a great matchup against Tampa. A decent streaming option. He's available in a lot of, a lot of leagues out there. Yeah, how about McCown? Good for the Jets. So congrats. Right, let's move we got those running backs. We hang on, that's Leonard Fournette. We got to talk about what's that? We got to congratulate our FanDuel winner from last oh, week. My bad, my bad. Vid sixty seven takes the victory last week. Get into our FanDuel game. We didn't get very much attention last week in terms of people signing up before they opened it up to the public. We're trying to get the FST community in there. Click on the link in the description. Join our league, it's a $5 game, you win the t-shirt, you win the cash, we're all in there, it's a lot of fun, get into our FanDuel game. Dude, and check out my picks, my picks last week were silly good, if you don't believe me, go check them out. Alright, <laughs> obviously I said I was going to talk about Fournette, so I'm still going to. The reason I want to, is a lot of people weren't understanding why he was inactive, it was because he, he missed practice, or he was late to practice, late to the game, being late, not on time, either way, he thinks it was a bonehead move, he's making sure that he's always early. And he has scored every time he's played an NFL game in his entire career. It's pretty good. That he's is a rookie, good. but that's still pretty good. Another rookie, one of my favorite, Alvin Kamara. All right, I think it's official. He will be ranked in front of Ingram until further notice. I mean, they yes. they love Kamara out there. And, and Ingram's not going to go away. He's still going to very much factor in. He's still a touchdown threat every week. So, you know, we don't have Ingram too much further down. He's only... Down at 14, we have Kamara at 10. At Buffalo, we just think, you know, they, they get him involved in the passing game, the running game. He's going to get enough touches. He should have another solid week. We are starting to put Kamara in the RB1 discussion at this point. Yeah, you have to at this point. Number 26, a guy that hasn't been in an RB1 discussion for many, many moons. But he is a flex <laughs> option this week, and that is Rawls of Seattle. Eddie Lacy really looks like he is going to be inactive. So with Rawls playing Arizona, getting the majority of the touches, while we don't consider him an RB1 or an RB2, he is absolutely on flex radar, simply based on the volume that he should get this week. At number 29, Amir Abdullah. You know, on paper, you would, you would kind of get excited about this. You, you know, he's going up against Cleveland. You got to think they're going to be playing with a lead. They're going to turn to Abdullah and just run the clock out. But... They wouldn't even give Abdullah the ball at the end of the game week nine because of the fumbles that he had. That He had two fumbles that he lost week nine. Now, I know, you know, a whole week of practice, they might forget and go back to him. It might have just been like in that game, in that moment thing. But it's just enough to scare us to put him down at this point just because we don't know how the carries are going to shake out. And maybe Theo gets some more touches. Who knows? But it's a little bit scary after those uh, after those fumbles. And if you have lineup questions, don't forget post them in this video. We answer as many as we can. We're doing a good job of answering. I feel like pretty much all that have come through. So leave comments in this video, and we get to them as soon as we can. I was gonna remember this time, Dustin. Jeez, Jeez. that was my line. Well, he just started talking. Oh, sorry. 
Say you're sorry to Brentbot. I don't apologize to robots. Julio Jones, wide receiver, that's who I'm talking about. We got him at number six, and the reason I want to highlight him, it's not because he had 12 targets last week, and I absolutely love targets, especially good wide receivers or running backs or tight ends. I just love targets, but I do want to talk about him because if you have him in your lineup, just know he potentially has a high ankle sprain. It's really weird reports on him right now because it's like he's going to play, but he also has a high ankle sprain. So if he has a high ankle sprain, he probably won't play. So it doesn't really make sense. So just really keep him on your radar as you're moving closer to Sunday. At number 17, Robbie Anderson going back to that Jets offense with that good matchup against Tampa Bay. Robbie Anderson's been pretty consistent as of late. He's got big play potential. He's got touchdown potential. And at this point, we got him as a wide receiver too, high upside wide receiver too. And he should be making most lineups this week if you own him. Next receiver, we're talking about number 31, and that's Dawson for the Washington Redskins. You know, while he has been playing amazing, he's had five targets last week. He's getting some targets week in and week out. It's creeping up every single week, it feels like. He's playing Minnesota, which I do don't mind their secondary. But Dawson is clearly the most talented receiver. The problem is he's not getting a ton of snaps. I believe this week is when he'll play the most snaps he does in his entire NFL career. And therefore, he is a great boom or bust play. Look out for him on my FanDuel Daily because I'm sure he'll still be cheap. At number 35, Paul Richardson for Seattle. Now, this is a guy that's been making a lot of noise this year. Has been pretty consistent for the most part, but he's a little banged up right now. He's questionable for the Thursday night game. So just play, pay close attention to that because it is a nice matchup against Arizona. And we have Tyler Lockett just a few spots below him at 38. You know, if Richardson ends up sitting, you know, we'd actually move Lockett up a decent amount, but just because, and we would have Richardson up higher if he wasn't a little bit banged up right now as well. But there's definitely going to be some points to go around, we feel like, on that Seattle offense. So th both those guys are interesting plays. Just got to see what happens with, uh, with the Richardson in injury. As we move up, Dustin, we have anything to talk about or can I go to tight ends? You can go to tight ends, Brambot. Thanks, boss. All right, tight ends. And I forgot, I haven't been my two-week thing, so I'm going to do my two-week stats for you. And this is for Jack Doyle, who's been absolutely ridiculous. He's playing Pittsburgh. Last two weeks, he's had 20 catches for 184 yards and a touchdown. The targets are unreal for him right now. He's inside our top three simply for that reason. If you own Doyle, it's probably hard to sit him at this point. And I'm going to talk about Jordan Reed at number 11. You know, it's, it's kind of uncertain right now. You know, if he's going to play this week, if he does, what kind of role he's going to have. You know, and because of that, we can't really, you know, rank Vernon Davis any higher. But whoever ends up starting, we feel like, for the Redskins will be right around 11. So that we just put them both there. One to talk about him just in terms of just, you know, we're not sure what's going to happen with Reed. If, if, if they're both playing, you got to think Reed's going to be the one to start. But Davis has been sneaking in there as well. It's just been a mess with all Jordan Reed owners. And it's just reason number 542 why he's a risky guy to take on draft day. But uh, the guy's just made of glass. As we move over to defenses, I'm talking about our number one ranked defense, and that's the Jags. But before I get into that, just file this away somewhere. Do not take them in the sixth round next year and think it's the <laughs> best idea ever. But they're, they're so good. So overdrafted. What's that? But they're so good. It doesn't matter. Defenses <laughs> rotate every year in fantasy. I, know, I remember I know. the Steelers were great. They were number one. Oh, they're going to be the best ever. They finished in like 13 that year. It is tough while they're a solid defense and a great pick this week. Last two weeks, they've only had to let up seven points. I don't see any reason why they're not going to be another solid performance against the Chargers. However, just note again for the future not to be so crazy with them. I've heard about people trading insane pieces in Keeper and Dynasty Leagues for them. Don't do that. That is dumb. Redraft leagues, I don't mind it. If you have pieces and you're looking for that perfect defense oh, no, to get redraft, you, I love redraft, it. I get. Yes, yeah. but no, I'm just, I'm just saying, I've definitely traded. I traded for KCD in a couple leagues last year, and that worked out for me. Chicago Bears. You're so smart, dude. Humble brag. I'm just saying, it worked out. Smart guy. Chicago. Like can I talk, Brent Bot? Thank you. God. Go ahead, proceed. Chicago Bears at number six, going up against Green Bay. The Bears! The over-under on mybookie.ag is 38 in that game, and the Bears are five-point five point favorites. 
That's ridiculous. They are expecting a very low scoring game, divisional game. You got to think the Bears are, are a good pickup for this week. And also one thing to consider too, the Bears play Cleveland week 16. So not a bad defense to just pick up this week and stash and just wait for that week 16 matchup against Cleveland. Stop Bears. So that's our week 10 rankings. Like we said, post comments in this video. We'll answer them. Leave a comment, subscribe, and give us those all-important thumbs up. High five, Dustin. Good show. Brent, bye.